it's on the five one hole mark. So coterminal angles are ang angles that look the same, like zero and 360, for example. They look the same. They're just a full rotation away from one another. So their initial sides and their terminal sides are actually in the same location. Or like, I don't know, 30 degrees and 390 degrees. Again, they would be in the same location where they start and stop, but there's an extra um, rotation in there. So you're going to see some problems like this. Actually, I just grabbed these from the Math Excel assignment. It says, uh, find a positive angle less than 360 degrees that is coterminal with the given angle. So we're starting with negative 820. We're looking for a positive angle that looks the same, but it's um, one or two or more rotations away. So all you need to do for this is keep adding or subtracting full rotations until you get the number that you're looking for. Now here we're looking for a positive angle and we're starting with something that's negative so we're just going to keep adding 360 a full rotation. And every time I add 360 it's really not moving where that terminal angle is, where that terminal side is. Um, it's just going to change how many rotations I have. So um, you need a calculator probably at least for a couple of things today anyway. You might as well grab it. Um, if I add 360 once for sure it's still going to be negative. Add 360 again, it's still going to be negative. I think we've got to add it on three times here to get a positive angle that's less than 360. So uh, if I add 720, that's negative 100. I think 260 is what we're looking for here. And then that would be your answer. Okay, so if it's in degrees, we're just adding or subtracting 360. Now the bottom one is a radian. So when we're talking about radians, think about our circle we've been practicing with. What's a full rotation in radians? 2 pi. So what we're going to do is add 2 pi on. And you might have to do this multiple times. Now radians are most of the time fractions, what we see. So this is just like adding and subtracting with common denominators. What's the common denominator here? 3. So instead of 2 pi, I can think of it as 6 pi over 3. And I actually think it's easier to do these. Um, everything's just in terms of pi, so we're just going to kind of carry the pi through. What's negative 20 thirds plus 6 thirds? Negative 20 thirds plus 6 thirds. It is right. Negative 14 thirds. Still negative. Add it on again. Add a full rotation, 2 pi, or with the common denominator, 6 pi over 3. That's going to give me negative 8 pi over 3. Add 6 pi over 3 again. That's going to give me negative 2 pi over 3. It's still negative. We're looking for a positive angle. Add 6 pi over 3 again, and I get 4 pi over 3 is the angle that we're looking for. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. If you had a positive angle and you were looking for a negative angle, you would just subtract 2 pi or subtract 360, depending on if you were in radians or degrees. All right, so that's just like a little, we'll call that an add-on, I guess, an amendment to 5-1. Um, 5-2 is really what we're starting today, and this is right triangle trig. This is your SOHCAHTOA stuff that you guys have done before. So really what we're doing today is um, a good chunk of what you guys saw in like Algebra 2 and maybe Geometry when you did your um, sine, cosine, and tangent stuff. Okay. And we'll do some of this today, some of this tomorrow. This 5-2 Math Excel, it's open if you want to work on it, but definitely not something you have to do this weekend. Um, I think it's due like the end of next week sometime, so you've got a good amount of time on it. Get your new homework weekend this weekend. All right, so um, draw this right triangle in your notes for me, and I want you to label all the sides and angles here, okay? So a couple things to notice. Capital letters are angles. Lowercase letters are sides. Also, if it's the same letter, they are opposite one another in the triangle. When we say opposite, we mean not touching. That angle A is not touching side A, or angle B is not touching side B, so on and so forth. Okay, so capital letters, angles, lowercase letters, sides, and if they're the same letter, they're opposite side and angle. Most of the time when our book has us draw a right triangle, they'll tell you what the right angle is. Um, and most of the time, if they use an A, B, C, it's going to be a C. So they'll say a right triangle with angle, right angle C um, is you know, the following information. And they'll tell you some maybe sides or angles. Okay. 
Um, we will eventually get to the point where everything won't be a right triangle, but most of the stuff we're going to do in this chapter will be. All right, so trigonometry really focuses on our trig functions, and this is the beginning of those. We've got six main trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And the definition of those is they are the ratio of two sides of a triangle, of a right triangle. When we say ratio, we're just meaning divide. So if I want to find the sine of some angle, I divide the opposite side and the hypotenuse. If I want to find the cosine of an angle, I divide the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. When we say opposite, opposite, is not touching our angle of reference. And you can see in that triangle um, where theta is located, theta, that acute angle, is our angle of reference. And adjacent is the side that is touching our angle of reference. So that's how you know which side to choose. It either is attached to that angle or opposite that angle. And then, of course, we always know that the hypotenuse is opposite our right angle. Okay, so Sokoto is a way that we remember at least the first three, sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent. And then you just need to remember really for the other three, um, we call these guys the reciprocal functions um, because there are sine, cosine, and tangent flipped, the reciprocal of those numbers. So sine and cosecant are reciprocals, cosine and secant are reciprocals, Tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. Give me a second to get that written down, and then we're going to practice with a right triangle in a second here. Okay, all right, so let's try this example. We're going to find the exact value for all six trigonometric functions for this angle theta. So go ahead and draw this picture in your notes. All right, before we get too far, hopefully you're noticing that we only have two sides of the right triangle, so we need to get the third side. We need all three sides to find all functions. Um, so what do we use? What formula do we use to find the missing side of a right triangle? Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, a and b are two legs. C is the hypotenuse. It doesn't matter which one you call a and which one you call b. Um, so we'll just say this side is x, whatever it is. So x squared plus 5 squared is 9 squared. So 9 squared is 81. 5 squared is 25. If I subtract those, I'm going to get 65. No. Yeah. What did I say? 81 minus 56. Thank you. Okay. And then I want to take the square root. We don't have to worry about a plus or minus here because for right now we're just talking about distances, so we're going to assume everything's positive. Once we place these in like quadrants and things, we might have some negatives, but for right now everything's going to be positive. Take the square root of 56. We want an exact answer, so absolutely no decimals when we do this. We do if we have a square root like this that doesn't give us um, a perfect answer. It's not a perfect square. We want to break that radical down. What is the largest perfect square that divides evenly into 56? Can you use your calculator. Can you do a little guess and check? The perfect squares are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. We want one of those to divide evenly into 56.
What can we use? Four and fourteen. And fourteen doesn't have any perfect squares that divide evenly into it, so I know that's the biggest one I can pick. Uh, two square root fourteen is then that missing side. All right, so now let's label our sides opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. So we know the hypotenuse is going to be opposite my right angle. The other two sides are determined based on where that angle theta is located, the angle of reference that we're going to be finding our trig values for. The adjacent side is touching our angle theta, and the opposite side is not touching our angle theta. All right, now you're ready to find... Sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. Starting with sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So 2 rad 14 over 9. 2 over 9 does not reduce. We know the square root 14 doesn't break down any further. This is your final answer. Okay. Um, we are not solving for an angle when we do this. We are just looking for the ratio. If it asks you to solve for the angle, that will be in the instructions. It will say find theta. That's not what we're finding. We're just finding the trig values here, so we stop at this point. I know you probably can do that because you didn't like Algebra 2 and stuff, and we will eventually do that, but right now we don't care what theta is. All right, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 5 over 9. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, 2 rad 14 over 5. Again, 2 over 5 doesn't reduce, rad 14 doesn't reduce, final answer. Now, once you have those three, we're just going to flip all of them. You just got to remember which one's which. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. Flip it, 9 over 2 rad 14. The reciprocal of cosine is secant, 9 over 5, and the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent, 5 over 2 rad 14. Now we have all of our ratios, we just have a slight problem with cosecant and cotangent. You may not have a radical in the denominator, you have to rationalize your answers. So in both of those, you don't have to multiply by the whole denominator. You can just use the radical. I'm going to multiply by square root 14 over itself, which is just like multiplying by 1, so it's not going to change what it's equal to. It's just going to change what it looks like. Multiply straight across. 9 rad 14 on top. On the bottom, what happens when you multiply rad 14 times rad 14? What do you get? It's 14. If you multiply a radical times itself, you just get the number underneath. Like if I multiply rad 3 times rad 3, I just get 3. So rad 14 times rad 14 is 14 times 2 is 28. 9 over 28 doesn't reduce. Rad 14 doesn't reduce. Final answer. On the bottom, it's going to look really similar. 5 rad 14 on top. 14 times 14 under my radical gives me 14 times 2 is 28. Okay? Questions on any of that? Great. Okay. Here is one for you to try, and I'm going to get you set up with it. This is an arbitrary right triangle. Okay, you can draw this for most problems that we're going to do this semester. It says find the other five trig function values for theta, given that theta is an acute angle in a right triangle. We have that picture, and cosine is one third. So the only difference here is. They haven't labeled the sides for you. You have to label the sides to start here. So if I'm given cosine, what two sides is cosine? What two sides divided? What's the ratio? That's adjacent over hypotenuse. So for calculation purposes, you can use 1 and 3. And technically, you could use other numbers too, like 3 over 9 would also be 1 third, or 4 over 12. It wouldn't change your answer, though, and I wouldn't do that anyway because it's going to make me reduce every single fraction I have. It's just going to make it harder. Your answers will be the same, though, if you did do that. So for that theta I have there, I can say the adjacent side is 1 and the hypotenuse is 3. Those are going to be the simplest numbers to use. 
All right, so now it kind of looks like the previous problem. You can find that missing side and then find all six trig functions, and then we'll put them up on the board in a few minutes, okay? Go. What questions do you have? Do you want to see any work for any of those? Any more than what's up there? Okay. Yeah, great. Okay. Perfect. All right. Last couple things we're going to do have to do with your special triangle from geometry. I know that's a little hard to see, though. That's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Put that picture in your notes. So I mentioned before when we started with the circle that the special angles that we see in our circle, 30, 45, and 60, are coming from these triangles, the 45, 45, 90 that we're going to do on this page, and then 30, 60, 90 on the next page. So the relationship between the legs and the hypotenuse of this triangle says that if I have um, a isosceles triangle, both angles are 45 in my right angle, in my right triangle. Um, the legs are equal, so here they're using A, but you could really use any variable. You might have used like an X back in geometry. And then whatever the legs are, that times the square root of 2 is always the length of the hypotenuse, okay? So what we're going to do is we're just going to use this generic triangle to find all six trig values for 45 degrees. And eventually these numbers that we're calculating are what's going to be added on to the unit circle, and those are what we're going to use to find a lot of our values throughout the semester. All right, so for this, because both angles are 45 degrees, um, it's symmetric. You can really consider either one of them the angle of reference. So let's pr just pretend maybe for picture purposes here that the theta is on the bottom corner there, okay? So if I wanted to find the sine of that angle, which we know the angle is 45 degrees, so it's really the sine of 45 degrees that we're calculating, it's the opposite side from my angle of reference divided by the hypotenuse. What's the opposite side? A, and the hypotenuse is A rad 2. Now, let's simplify that. It doesn't matter what A is, because what happens with A? It ends up canceling. So I end up with 1 on top and rad 2 on the bottom. And then I'm not allowed to have that square root in the denominator, right? So what do I do? Multiply it on the top would give me rad 2. Multiply by rad 2 on the bottom just gives me 2. Does that number look familiar when you guys did unit circle last year? Rad 2 over 2 was on that circle. You probably used it a lot. Okay, cosine of 45 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, and it actually ends up looking the same. A over A rad 2, so it'll eventually simplify to the same thing, rad 2 over 2. Okay. Tangent of 45 degrees is what over what? A over A, which reduces to 1. Okay. Now my three reciprocal functions. Cosecant secant, and cotangent. Now, you can calculate them from scratch if you want, or you can just take what we have already and flip it. Let's start with maybe cotangent, because that's the easiest one. If I take 1 and take the reciprocal, I end up with 1. Okay. Now, the other two, you, can, you have an opportunity to work smarter, not harder here. I can flip my final answer, the rad 2 over 2 but then I would end up with a radical in the denominator, yeah? And then I'd have to rationalize it, so I'm adding extra steps to myself. We know 1 over rad 2 is equivalent. We know they're equal. So I'm going to flip that one, because if I flip that one, I won't have a radical in the denominator, and I'm saving myself like two or three steps in the problem. So if I flip 1 over rad 2, I just end up with rad 2 over 1, or just rad 2, and then secant, because it's the same number, is going to end up being the same thing. Okay, so kind of look for that if you have to find all six of these. You might not always want to take the reciprocal of the final answer. If it's going to give you a radical in the denominator, maybe look back a step so you can save yourself a little bit of work.
All right, so last two problems for the day are yours to do, and we're going to put answers up on the board. So I want you guys to do the same thing for 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Um, and these are the ratios of the sides, so make sure you have that triangle in your notes. So for any 30, 60, 90 triangle, opposite are 30 degrees we call A or X, whatever variable you want to use. Opposite are 60 degrees is that leg times the rad uh, 3, times the rad 3, and then my hypotenuse is always 2 times A. Okay, so for the ones on the left, you're going to use 30 degrees as your angle of reference. For the ones on the right, you're going to use 60 degrees as your angle for reference. And you're going to see, because it's a lot of the same numbers we're using throughout, you're going to see some similarities, some patterns that kind of pop up here when we change um, what side's adjacent and what side's opposite. All right, so I'll give you a few minutes to work in your groups. We'll get these up on the board, and then that's as far as we're going to go with this today. B's look good. The only thing that we're going to just get rid of are the A's. Cancel them. You don't want A's in your answer. You don't have to have any calculations with those, right? Oh, wait, I'm missing one. What am I missing? Secant, what's secant? Good. You see some of them that are flipped there? Sine and cosine flip. Tangent and cotangent flip. Secant and cosecant are flipped. All right, that's going to be, um, we're going to talk about that as a property tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, how certain functions when we change the opposite and adjacent side are going to have equal values there. All right, that's it then. Any questions for me on first half of 5-2? Okay, so tonight, finish your 5-1 Math Excel if you haven't already. Hopefully what we did at the beginning of the book in the language helps a little bit. And then um, you have circuit training optional bonus. If you want to work on it, if not, that's okay too. This assignment 5-2 isn't going to be due until what day? Next Friday. You got this time. All right, I'll do stuff on Lido and that's it.